party next door. Yeah. Can we make it official by introducing you properly with a round of applause? Thank you. It's really nice to meet you at last. Uh, we'll be live around the world streaming on Apple Music through Beats. You know Thank how you. we feel, man. Every record you put out. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Um, do you like it out here in Los Angeles? You, you obviously you spend a bit of time out here as well. I love it. Um, I love the access to everything. And, do you live out here officially? I mean, do you split your time or how do you? Oh, yeah. I've lived out here since 17. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I spent some time in Miami, but yeah, I live out here officially, like super officially. Yeah. yeah. And is it good for work? Is it good for productivity? Yeah, that, yeah this is where the money's at. <laughs> I learned that when I, you know, when I spent some time in Miami. Like, a lot of distractions in Miami. But like, here's like where it's like you stick to, like you stay focused, you know, and get things done. Yeah. yeah. How do you approach writing with, you know, for yourself or other people? Because I know that there are great examples of people who approach it like, with a discipline. Yeah. How do you do it? Do you go as and when you feel it or do you try and get something down every single day? I work every day, like just period. Like I'm, it sounds so corny, but like I have a tour, I have to get on a plane and start a tour tomorrow and it's yeah. like yesterday I was in the studio. Like I do stuff like that gets everybody upset when you say you're supposed to be on vocal rest. <laughs> like I'm in the studio all the time. So just a lot of stuff that goes on in my life. So I have so much content and that's yeah. the only way like I really like want to get it out via music. How do you take care of your voice? How do you, and, and is it something that you actually are aware of now? Because oh, yeah, I drop smoking, like, and if I do, it's literally, I treat my vocals as an instrument. Mm. So I'll take a shot of vodka if I want it to be raspy. <laughs> um, That's the technique? Yeah. Um for the type of song it is and who I want it to reach to. Mm -hmm. Cause that's, you know what I mean? Cause that's what they're used to. And how do you achieve the pure tone? The pure tone is I tell whoever's in the studio, get me boiling hot water, where super boiling, that you're like afraid to give it to me. <laughs> and I literally put it exactly on the back of my tongue to shock my body and shock the back of my tongue. I have never heard of that technique before. And crazy. then it like cleans it up. I want to talk about the, the, the difference between Making music for yourself, yeah, right. It's P and D, and then being in a collaborative space. Is there a difference? Is there a different compartmentalization of your brain when you go into say work with Rihanna or work with somebody else on another record, and you're not so consumed by your own vision? You're in a shared environment. What is that experience like for you specifically? For you, I literally have to literally have to um, interview artists. You know, like same way. Like I. I ask the most awkwardest questions. I want to see your reaction. Like, yeah. I want to see how you, your actual personality, you know what I mean? Has anyone ever reacted badly to that? And you've had to work no, with them a little No, no, they actually, like, respect that. Like, because yeah. I, like, I, I do take it to that extra level and ask you, like, certain, <laughs> you know, wild questions. In, in privacy, obviously, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, crazy. but But, yeah. And then they usually, people know how I work. They just let me go. Mm-hmm. And I just like deliver them like the, the song like done, and, and it's kind of just like how it is, you know what I mean? And it's like we could change words when you're like in the middle of cutting it, like while you're in the middle of cutting it. Besides that, like there's never no like everybody's in the room. No writing by committee. No creative no, by committee. No, that's like corny to me. It's oh like man, five different stories. It's really one, tough too, like, man. Oh, that sounds cool. Oh, that sounds cool. Oh, and it comes back and it's completely changed shape. And then have you ever had a situation where you've taken your name off a record? Tell the truth, where you've had to take your name off a record because by committee it's come back and it's not something that you actually stand by. Yes or no? And I won't ask you what it was. Yes or no? Yeah. I want to talk about the song work because uh, this is one of those real high points in a career that's full of them. You know, I'm talking about Rihanna as well as yourself, but for, for Rihanna to come back with a song that stands alongside her biggest records at that moment in time is a real achievement. That's, that's, that's maintaining the wave and rising above it. So how was that experience? How deep did you get with her in order to get what you needed to get into that record? Tell us about your work on, on work. Work, the beat originally wasn't even a, a reggae beat. Like, it was just, it had no drums. It was just that. Um, it was super late at night. Everyone knows, like, how I work. Like, I'm an owl. What time do you that's start? A, that's when I'm most vulnerable. What time do you start? Oh, I, I don't get to the house at, till 11. Everyone right. gets to the house like at 2 and leaves right. at 8 to beat traffic. Right. I don't get to the house till 11, so it's empty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, she's there, though. She's there up all night, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it was just one of those nights where it was, it was definitely a story about myself and the current situation I was in. But I knew it was so, like, it was, it literally just flowed out. Like, it was like a, another freestyle. It was just like honesty, 
And she felt it as well. You were both looking at each other like we got one. Here's how. Here's what it is. It's like I called. I called in Omar Grant, mm-hmm. and this is not throwing out Omar Grant. Shout out to Omar. Um, sh- Rihanna and her mom had to fight for that song. Excuse me. Yeah, like they like everyone was just like, what, like what is it like? Because don't forget, it was wasn't it? Um, yeah, but I have my, mm-hmm. and it was complete opposite of where everyone was saying this, she was this is what go, it was going to be. Golly, you're gonna go hot. This is where yeah, it was yeah. gonna. Yeah. So when sex with me came first, and she was just playing that around the house, saying like, okay, like I need something that's like gonna shock me. You know what I mean? That's like. That came first, but I wasn't satisfied with that. Like I wanted, this, I wanted the single. You, you know, because there was a lot going on in the house. There yeah. was a lot of like you know a high chest, people. a lot of push ups. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of people with, that were doing a lot of push ups. You know, so I can imagine it's the most competitive recording oh, yeah. environment ever. Oh yeah, I can imagine it's like everybody with a name is in there, and it's just Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So so since Sex with Me was playing the, um, she was banging that in the house. I guess she just let me have my own room at that point mm. and just said, let party do its thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Because all I did was inspire me to be like, mm. you know, like, we're going to nah. get something out. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and yeah, just one night, that's just, that's a second language to me. Like, first language to me. Like, I was like, those are like lullabies to us, like reggae music. So mm. it's like, mm. we were raised on that. So mm. it's, it's almost heritage, like, heritage for you. Yeah, man. that's bring, a real culture. Like I hear a lot of language that you use in your songs. I don't hear elsewhere. And I wonder whether that's a real focus thing for you in your craft. Like, I'm not going to say what everyone else is saying. I'm going to really try and push it forward every, with every syllable and every detail. You literally just like repeat everything I say in the studio. Like You just said everything I say in every session. Great. So like Connection. I don't know what to say after that, besides, yeah. Yeah. You know, you've been busy, man. And I know that people are just like, hurry up with the now now. And I'm like, I just need to get I to- I want to know what the now now is. The now now is, well, I'm going to ask you in a minute. But first, okay, I want to okay. talk about another collaboration, which I love, um, which is your work on, uh, you work with Rihanna again on this, which is Wild Thoughts, smash it, absolute worldwide global number one smash it record. And um, it's not like Khaled wasn't stacking them up already, but this one was another level for him altogether. Now this- is a real community record in terms of artists appearing on it. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your work on this record. I want a story about this party. We're at storytelling mode now. We've gotten past the awkward introduction me. stage. I need the stories. I want the PND special. The PND special is very raw. So, uh, <laughs> how'd it happen? I was supposed to go on vacation right before tour. Mm-hmm. Um, summer's over, so last year. And Khaled hit me with the Khaled vibrato. I was just at his house like three days ago. Right. And how's it go? Does it go? Yo, yo, party, I need that, like that smash party that like changed the world, it's party. That, I know this is I, the one. I, it's, it's, it's that, you just missed that like one other phrase I too. I already know, it's a destiny emotion. Like, the whole thing, yeah. the whole shebang. Yeah, he's the Tony Robbins of music, man. I love everything that guy puts forward. It. And I heard the beat and it was supposed to be vacation, tour starts, you know what I mean? And I we booked a studio at Circle House. Mm-hmm. And knocked it out. What does that mean? Knocked it out. Like I mean, what are you talking, For, uh, like in an hour? Forty five. Like, yeah, like <laughs> I, I hate for it to sound like that. But if you like, if you like, this is like just like how you have a real job. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. as a professional, it's like I know I'm super young, but it's like I've been. You know what I mean? I've been writing and yeah, and, since you're a teenager. Yeah. So it's I put myself in a lot of positions to have a lot of content. You know what I mean? Ah, right. So you have that kind of like subliminal folder in your mind of ideas and inspiration. When you hear something, it can present you with 10 options in your mind and you can just start to pick and push. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So it was was really just, you want a banger? Like that's what you want, a banger? So do you want, like, you know, like a banger is different than like, you know, like a a love story. All right. A banger. Okay. Boom. Let's do it. Let's knock it out. Let's do the wordplay. Let's do the like, you know, let's Mm. do the stuff that like... Mm. You know, the double, triple entendre, the mm. multi bars, let's do it, let's have fun, let's do it, bang. And the wow, wow, wow. Yeah. The wow, wow, wow. And, and wow, the, wow. everything intentional, like the, like poking Rihanna in her back, being like, baby, 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 like this is a New York song, mm. so you got to say it like Ja Rule, like you got to like, yeah. like show respect, you know what I mean? Like you can't sing it sweet, like you like everything's intentional. But we knocked it out like that, like it was it was fun, like it's supposed to be fun, It's a, you wanted a fun banger, sent it right back to him the next, like, Right then, did he face? I bet you he FaceTime videoed after he saw it, after he heard it. He just like it was just you know he it was Khaled. 
<laughs> Cal, the Cal did Cal's thing. He's and yeah, that's how that turned out. Well, that part of it. Yeah, I want to know in that moment when you're writing, mm-hmm. when you're riffing or you're putting words out there or you're getting your melodies yeah. right and getting your words right, your phrasing and everything else. Mm. You know, and I'm just like I'm into your craft, so I'm just gonna go deep here. I want to know what does the moment feel like to you? When you know you've got something melodically and phrasing that's a banger and it feels good, you know, I know you want to see me nigga, 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 and all these things are coming yeah, at yeah. you, and you're like, wow, that's yeah. a great line, and that that's flows. That's funny, that he said that the other day, just that phrase. Yeah. Of, yeah. I want to know, like, what you're feeling at that moment in time. Are you just, like, racing to get no, it again, out? No, it's again, it's like what people haven't said. Like, I want, because I don't want to go out and say I know Rihanna, but I just know, like, her what moves Rihanna. I, yeah, which is what, again, like, which is similar to me, like, like, ruckus in the sense of, like, the truth, the raw truth, and like, and a little bit of wit, like spinning and it's wet, just like it came from Maytag. It's like to you, it's like a mumble until you actually sit down and realize I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Like, it's very raunchy, but without having to swear. Like, you know, it's like borderline, and she's the only person that really like could get away with it and have fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, without a doubt. Right? That's and why party. she must be so like, fun to write with. Because she has the voice that can pull off all of the things you just said. Yeah, and would. And actually would sing it. You know what I mean? Okay, it's time. You've been out there teasing music, I'd imagine, oh, because yeah. we've had song titles that seem to be coming step by step by step by step. So while I've got you here, and don't get me wrong, man, I mean, I'd have gone for a ramen. But the fact that you're here on Beats right now on Apple Music, um, I'm assuming it's more than social and we've got other things to talk about. So can we can we get some facts for the fans of, of what's going on and what you've been alluding to and what you have coming? Yeah, I'm about to, uh, I'm about to drop a project, which is obvious. When? Clearly. Um, it's going to drop after this last picture. So yes, there's one more song after the seventh song. So, seven songs. Yeah, that was made in seven days. And, that, and what's the name of the, the project? Seven Days. Makes sense. So one song a day over the course of seven days. I just like had a bad July. Why? Really? Up to you. Uh, women. Got it. Like, you know? Yeah. Like a, yeah. Like a, had a ting? Not a ting, like a bend a knee mm. and, and then screwed it up. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm 24. But like, yes, yeah, like, you know, mm. I continue to put myself in situations and... That's where the content continued to come from. So you had to go get it out of your system in the studio? Over seven That's days. the only way. That's the only way. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of stuff, a lot of the songs like literally happened like right after. Oof. Like maybe she walked out the house and like how I deal with things is okay, walk right upstairs to the studio and take it in one cut and then call my homeboys. And then like, really? You just did that all over? Like you just, but she just left though. Like, yeah, so seven seven days is the project. It's a breakup. It's a breakup project. No, it's not a breakup project. Thank it's you a, for it's clarifying. A lo- yeah, it's not a breakup project. It's a love. It's not project. what it is. It's a project of songs. I mean, seven, seven days of real songs of real things that happen. I just made them. I just wrote them and like sang them seven days. Seven days. Can we, this must be it, right? Damage. Oh yeah, that's um. You are, we're gonna move that as a single, I think. If. So we can play that. Hang on. This is Damage featuring Halsey. Oh, we're going to play Damage? Let's do it. Featuring Halsey? Yeah. One take. She's a monster, I think. She is a monster. She's a monster. Her album is in my top five albums of this year. Shout out to Halsey. Halsey is so talented and her voice is so strong and I love her. Like, it's so addicting. When she comes in, man, she just stops you. She stops you from doing what you're doing and she commands your attention when she sings. And and does her voice, like, it's, her voice is just so, like... I don't know. It's just I just love her voice. She can say anything, and it just sounds amazing. She's probably the only artist I've made a song with in the studio together, like successfully. Wow! Like in a sense of we were both in the studio, and we made a song, and it was finished. Like I went in, cut my verse, yeah. cut the hook. She came in with her verse. Shout out to Prep. We did the rest of the, like you know what I mean. The like the stuff that did the magic. Yeah. That was like the f- only artist I've ever worked with. Like literally, like one mic. We did it in like in studio <laughs> successfully. I love it. Party next door featuring Halsey. So shout out to Halsey. Yeah, absolutely. She knows how we feel, beats, man.